All right, this is episode two of Business One on One, which is. <laughs> Let's give him the disclaimer quick now. <laughs> All right, and let me. I was told I have to give a disclaimer before yes. we officially get into this, and that is that Aaron is a clown. He specifically asked that I put that yes, out there please, so that you guys please. would be unarmed if you just see him bust out laughing He's in the middle of the um. You see, I am I am a clown, but um, I have some being behind the camera. Now, call my feet and things sweating right now. If only when you know really like this now you are our second guest and i'm realizing more and more that all of you guys behind the scenes have a yeah, affair yeah. of being yeah, in front yeah, of the yeah, camera yeah. despite being the people that actually have the most sets of information and the wealthiest of information to share with persons who are interested in the fields that you're like in so have a conversation yeah, so all your bears all your bear with me if all you notice i just bust out laughing randomly is because it's yeah, a malfunction. Yeah, so this is episode two of the video podcast series that we are doing uh, in relation to this business initiative that we want to try to help bring young startup entrepreneurs and even creatives up to par with, you know, what is expected of them as business owners, mm-hmm. as persons who are operating or running businesses or who would eventually want to have an empire of their own. Yeah. So I felt it necessary to bring a creative to the mm. forefront. And of course, why not start with you? Iran is my fiance as well, so he, we I have a very detailed inside look as to how his business functions and, and operates. Good and bad. Yes, from all angles, and I yeah. felt that it's important, um, not just as a creative to bring you to the forefront, but as a videographer. Yeah. Um, we did have some back and forth with what is the best term to title you as for this series, <sighs> and that's because you are multifaceted in what Correct. you're able to do in the visual arts yeah. field. So. You tell people, what do you identify as? My first love is cinematography. I love anything that deals with composing a shot, um, lighting a shot, the way a shot moves and what how things move in a shot. That's, that's where I, 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 I reside most. Um, unfortunately, based on how our industry kind of is locally, you need to kind of be a jack of all trades in a sense. So I learned to edit after. You know, and of course, being somebody who wanted to get into business, it's imperative that you you kind of learn how to do a little bit of everything because you, I mean, you, you kind of run in your own show. So you had to be a little bit of admin, a little bit of, um, you know, creative on that end, editing on this end, some kind of audio sometimes on an accent. Things that I didn't learn how to do, which I believe you might talk about later. Yeah. It comes to like taxes and accounts and that kind of thing is where the real baptism of fire kind of started now. Right. For persons who may not be very familiar with you, um, you would have gotten into video production as early as... 18. 18, 18 years yeah. old. 2003, right. to be specific. What was the um, occurrence that led you into that field? I'm actually quite excited to tell you a story because it's, it's a funny one. When I left school, I did the OJT thing. I did the grocery thing. Maybe for like a year. I have a friend. <laughs> I didn't see him for like, I didn't see him for like two weeks. And I was like, dog, I ain't seen you, boy. Mom. He said, boy, I got a little walk, boy. Dog, boy, I got a little walk. I said, what you do? He said, bro, I don't do nothing. I, I said, what you mean? He said, when I go to work, I drink juice, eat cricks, and watch TV whole day. I say, well, yeah, but I'm not letting the done because I find I walk to have. <laughs> me, me, I ain't paid to do nothing. Mm-hmm. Got an internship. And for the first three months, they didn't fuck that. I eat cricks. I eat cricks. I watch TV and I drown juice for like for like three months, mm-hmm. and then I got bored. There was a guy that took me on a shoot right. for the very first time, and when I went on that shoot, is what it was at that moment. Immediately, I knew this is exactly what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. From that point, that that may have been six months into the first year with a company called Visual Art and Production Limited. Shout out Timmy, Timmy Mora. Mm-hmm. You know, um, at that company, I would have learned. Under the likeness of Romano Francois, right. Aisha Streaker, Christian Duff, um, Joshua Viscunia. I could call a lot of names and those who in TV wouldn't know the names. Um, but I was fortunate to come up under a lot of very experienced guys in the field at that time. Video work to editing to graphics mm-hmm. and to sound like um, Robin Foster right. as well. He was he was the audio person at that time. And that period of time I would have started as a as a tech. Yeah. What you call that, tech. that was 2003 and now we're in 2020. Did you have any significant person or persons that would have, you know, come into your life to help groom you into this field and this space that you eventually became an expert in? Um, for me, I would say I, I, there's no there's no one person or group of persons that I could brand the title mentor. Because of the type of industry that we worked in mm-hmm. and we learned in it was hands as an internship hands on. Mm-hmm. So I would have learned from a lot of different people in a lot of different ways and they would have contributed 
indirectly and some directly. Mm-hmm. Um, my greatest mentor, I think, is life, honestly. Um, I learned in silence. When I first started and before I had the opportunity to to hold a camera or, or lift up a light per se, as I say, you're there as a production assistant. Or yeah, grip. so you're just there as a viewer. As a, yeah, as a grip. The most yeah. you could say, grab this, pick up this, bring that, carry that upstairs, bring that downstairs, go for the water, do all. You were literally there to do the grunt work. Right. But in my experience as a grunt work, because I lived in my imagination so much as a child mm-hmm. and as a young adult, I would sit and look at how they would do things and I would say, okay, I wonder how I would do it. How would they enter the scene from the from the left to the frame and then transition to the right? Where would that light be? Yeah. And I started to challenge myself to do certain things and um I that's that's kinda how I learned. That was mm-hmm. my that was my mentor. It was a combination of people being there for the same journey that I was a part of. Yeah. As well as me just really because I'm interested in the field, I really wanted to learn. So I applied myself to learn at all costs. There's this ongoing conversation about whether you need to get educated Mm. in the field of whatever creative uh, strength you have. Yeah. Or if it's just enough for you to just have enough experience Mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of build a career or build a a business around the experience of that. What are your thoughts on that? Did you ever feel like you needed to study for it or... Um, do you feel like just the amount of years that you would have had, because it's about 16 years, over 16 years yeah. now, right? It's sufficient enough for you to stand your ground and say, no, I'm a professional in this. I've been doing this for however long. This is what I know. This is what I can do. My perspective on that, I mean, it's changed a lot, honestly. Mm-hmm. I remember a couple of years ago, well, I wanted to, to go away to, to do some studying where cinematography and film was concerned. For anybody who's investigated or done any kind of research it costs a lot of money right it yeah, could be I like it could be like a pot of four hundred thousand tt to get a bachelor of arts here in film of course locally we have the film program which is something that ue does which is good and i would advocate for anybody to go check it out it starts firstly with me and mm-hmm. how i learn mm-hmm. i learn very hands-on i'm a very right. hands-on um, interactive person in the sense that I like to touch and feel things and I learn the faster that way you know book and thing I don't like book I hate books right. I don't like to read at Most all Most creators, yeah. put me in an environment to interact or interfere with something and I'll, I'll start to do the best that I could and I will learn quickly just to make that point there it's it's something that again you need to be aware of as a creative or somebody that's interested in the your creative field yeah. yeah what is your learning What's style your learning what is style? Your, your interest what, what, what method works best for you yeah. to want to apply yourself and to learn and to grow yeah so i mean that's a really important point that you're yeah, able yeah. to identify that at such a young age yeah so for me because i know i learned that way mm-hmm. faster i i was i was at that point faced with the decision listen really think about going into an environment where i mean of course it's very practical yes but yeah. there's also a lot of film theory that you need to learn and that's well and good mm-hmm. i just personally feel like for me that wasn't what i needed to do at the time right um i was already very advanced in my years of experience as a creative I had a lot of work to to back that in terms of a portfolio. Mm -hmm. So I feel now that I I, I honestly don't really need it. And it's strange because I was looking at something on social media from some guys that do video production internationally. Some guys called Buffers Nerds. Um, Chaka Bowens would be the guy. For those who in the industry, they might know him. And they they actually offering an online course now. And the preface of that online course is they were comparing the fact that they would have spent years and yeah. thousands of dollars in film school. Mm-hmm. And they themselves are looking at the way the industry is changing. Mm-hmm. And you can learn everything online. Yeah. You can For- go to the university or YouTube dog and mm-hmm. learn everything that you need to learn. Mm-hmm. So they themselves are now looking at, okay, we understand the novelty and the place and the importance of what that traditional degree of learning was. Mm-hmm. But the industry is changing so quickly. Yeah. Industry moving so fast, Dred. Yeah, you need and to evolves. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. You need, you need to move with it. So I would I, I would probably advocate do short courses. Right. Do courses in lighting, do courses in yeah. cinematography, do courses in screenwriting, mm-hmm. um, different things so that you get certified in bits as you go along the way. Mm-hmm. But of course, rely on the things like YouTube, rely on these YouTubers who have who do tutorials on how to do these different things and work as you go because we probably don't have the time to dedicate all that time again. The industry will pass you by. Yeah, and, that, and even for entrepreneurs, right, or persons interested in maybe not necessarily fitting into the, the 9 to 5 or 8 to 4 mold. Yeah. Um, again, it's it's you harnessing on what you paying attention to yourself, right, and kind of identifying, especially coming out of school where you have a very crucial crossroad yeah. of deciding do I go to university? Do I mm-hmm. take an internship? Do I do some courses what do i do with this time yeah. now is 
I think there's a crucial space in between there where you have to just have a little quiet moment and decide yeah, yeah. or expose yourself to as much little things as possible for you to then be yeah. able to tap into and or identify what you really what moves you what drives yeah. you what in, think, what ignites you and i think in addition to that being if you're if you're inclined to creativity you need to find a support system that works yeah something that can foster and 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 build that as well because unfortunately the traditional mold has always been pursue the more strategic careers be yeah. a doctor be a of lawyer course. Be and, a nurse. and i can speak to that right because you know i i went to a prestige um, very highly yeah. based academic school. I remember coming out of form six like, oh, I I don't know what to do. I yeah. have no yeah. career, career guidance. guidance yeah. Yeah, yeah, there was. I didn't have any access to any. I mean, maybe I did, but I didn't go. I didn't know that that was a path that I had yeah. as an option to explore. Um, and at the time, UE was offering free education, free tertiary education, mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, I'm not going to just waste my time. I'm gonna just sign up for it. And yeah. I ended up doing a degree in psychology. And the only reason I did psychology was because I felt like that was the only middle ground. Yeah area that i could have um done to be able to at least do something with my time the funny thing is during that time in ue when i was there i think it was like a three or four year program most of my learnings took place outside of the classroom Mm -hmm. it was based on me just being there socially and meeting other people and some of the closest friends that i have to date would have been people that i met during that ue time there are people now that i knew back then were real hardcore yeah academics um, academics right they did like physics and maths and like the other day i was on social media and i saw one of them they're photographer they're taking pictures now and that's probably a very yeah. viable cost, a way that they're able to live and exactly. make money and survive. And feed that part of them that's creative. That needs fulfillment. Yeah, yeah. because you if you don't if you don't come into what that purpose is in you, it is gonna be in a system, a ritual, a routine. You get, yeah. up, you get up six o'clock in the morning, you brush your teeth, you eat three doubles on the road, mm-hmm. you go in your office from eight o'clock you can, lunch twelve o'clock, half past three, you're lucky you don't cook by not even half past three. I have past 10. You mm-hmm. can, you just counting that thing, watching the hand on that clock going, going to because yeah. you want to run out of there to do something that you really want to do. Exactly. And it's you funny you I mean? mentioned that because for me, where the breaking point was for me in deciding to go this direction as in, you know, content production, yeah. etc., um, was when I, there was right at coming out to the end of my UE days, I decided to do an internship at an oil company, right? Which this is as corporate and yeah, as rigid super, as it gets, right? Like super corporate though. And I had done an internship there for, I think it was about three or four months. And I think that was the point when I was like, yeah, I will do real yeah. good in this environment because yeah. I have the discipline and the, the know-how too. Yeah. But I'm not going to be happy here. I'm not yeah. going to feel fulfilled here. This is just going to feel very exactly. routine and monotonous and that's not going to do anything and that's for the, me. And that's the issue with, as I say, some of the persons that I would have encountered over time because yeah. a lot of them because they did not have that support system or that network of persons that would say yo let me really help you figure out what you want to do yeah a lot of them would have wasted four years mm-hmm. i want to say we, i mean they, they would have learned stuff but mm-hmm. they can't take the stuff that they would have used necessarily in a holistic sense and apply it to what they really want to do yeah so now a lot of them playing catch up so now like four years later they realize it's like like young adult midlife crisis yeah <laughs> yeah because <laughs> right. now you're like I wasted all this time in university. Only to now discover. Yeah, only to discover now mm-hmm. that this is absolutely what I don't want to do. Yeah. And now they try to come back mm-hmm. and reinvent our wheel. And it works for someone that doesn't work for others. Yeah. I love to dig deeper into stories like this, right? Because it exposes for a lot of people who may be a little lost with what they are interested in doing or what yeah. they want to get into professionally. The way to go about exploring and finding that. Art was my thing in school. I was heavy into art, drawing paint and that kind of stuff so to draw and to paint is to take things from any um, head and any imagination put it on paper right so it Bring was it life. It, yeah so it was from that place of being able to create something right or to illustrate something whether you look at something and it and you, you take it and you redraw it or it, it's from it come out of thin air is the act of creating i think when i went into tv that the two kind of came together mm-hmm. in the sense that okay i'm not drawing with a pen when i'm drawing with an image and i got into the studio mm-hmm. of the you know the company that i was at at the time mm-hmm. and i saw the lights and the equipment and i was like you know this look this look cool you'd see all the hard work that goes into producing what an image looks like and people might think you know you set a camera up and what you see is what you get but mm-hmm. it takes a lot more than that you have to you have to understand what the camera does what the person or the subject in front of the camera does what the lighting around that person does mm-hmm. or that subject does and now all of that marries together in one to create an image that you 
as an individual looking on could relate to. The modern day mold of e university of YouTube and the internet yeah. is so important because mm-hmm. now you can directly access what you want to be quickly so you know I, I, I think I might like fashion designing yeah I watch and I you, absorb a lot yeah. of this content so, so I might would, be really yeah, interested just here you just go on, on online and, and watch and one video the mm-hmm. first five seconds of a video could change your entire life yeah. and change your direction so true so that's what would have gone on in a sense with with me as I say I came into that my aha moment was different mm-hmm. I didn't I was not in the millennial age to say that I would have had access to a lot of stuff online a lot of material online but I had the privilege of as I say being enroll into that internship program yeah. not knowing what i wanted to do being launched into a space where i was allowed the freedom to figure out what i wanted to do yeah unfortunately the stars don't align that way for everybody mm-hmm. so my i'm grateful to god all the time that my stars aligned the way that i did yeah like, I, I have an affinity people. to a lot of creative eccentric. artistic eccentric yeah. people yeah um, and so I would have bounced off a lot of those types of people in UWE. Another thing that happened that changed my course of direction was having an interaction with um, Stephen Taylor mm-hmm. at that time in UWE. Um, he, and this was a chance encounter. I was actually lemon with another creative yeah. and he happened to be passing, but he's also very eccentric. So he was yeah. very, you know, <laughs> out there like, hey, who is you? I don't know you. And, you know, he introduced himself. Yeah. And it's us in us having those conversations is where he enlightened me about an area that I didn't even know was an option or, or existed that would have also facilitated did some form of creativity yeah. but it would have also matched really well with my ability to be very good at organizing yep. and being administrative mm-hmm. and that was to be like a film producer or somebody behind the scenes yeah. like a project coordinator or mm-hmm. production coordinator and he exposed me to that and it's from that exposure is where I was able to, to really harness on okay if I'm really good at administration and he this is just film yeah. there are other creative things happening exactly. outside of that photography video exactly. um music events events and it so happened that i was actually exposed to music from however long i had a music background my whole family was was into music so it was i was able to make the connect at that point and say okay i can mix this the strength i have in administrative with Mm -hmm. the creative feel that actually does interest me and i could build a business around it exactly so yeah i mean it's so amazing all the things you can really learn about yourself which is the most the first and most important step to starting a business i sincerely believe it's understanding who you are and knowing what you like your interests your passions your strengths and being able to clearly identify that before you move on to to putting a structure to it you had a moment where you were battling whether it even made sense to start your own business yeah or if you should (laughs) just continue freelancing being you know with somebody as a contractor working on different projects what for you well you can let us Mm. let the people know because i'm aware but (laughs) let the people know what would have made the difference for you and how you know what what transitioned you into completely deciding i'm going to start this as an official business at that time of life Mm -hmm. i preferred to be safe and secure i liked i liked the comfort of an eight to four mm-hmm. having a fixed income yeah because at that time with visual arts it was a yeah it was, i four. worked it was i worked at four. i worked at visual arts for seven or eight years consistently yeah. and then i came into freelance i was a freelancer for maybe two years two years one one of there is a one to two years i was freelancing my partner at the time and he actually wanted to approach me to run his business but the funny story is that just as it was leading up to him asking me that, God sort of pulled me in a direction to do my own business, boy. And mm-hmm. I was like, God, I mean, really on this business thing, you know. <laughs> God, eh? God, mm-hmm. I am a believer. I believe that Christ is real and he speaks to me through his spirit and people. Right. Go to church, I day, man. Auntie Sean, I hope you're watching this. Or Taylor, Taylor could tell you the truth because Taylor knows she mother good. Auntie Sean, come off the worship, of the, of the altar from the worship team and come down and watch me. And said, Aaron, God says he feels robbed. I, I ever see, watch black me, I get white. <laughs> and she tell me that, because you don't like to hear them thing. I get mm. white, honestly. I was like, what do you mean? She said, God feels robbed. Mm-hmm. He said, you've put down your dreams and your talents to make everybody else achieve theirs. Mm-hmm. But I've given you gifts and talents to achieve yours. Mm-hmm. And that, so that, that would have been the second aha moment for me in life in terms of, as I say, I had all this creativity brewing, but I was, I was working for everybody else, and that's that's not a bad thing. Yeah, because you were but making money doing yeah, that as well, right? Yeah, I was making mm-hmm. a lot of money. Mm-hmm. I was doing what I wanted to do. I was happy. Mm-hmm. I was functioning. I was passionate. I yeah. was doing. I just wasn't doing it for me. Mm-hmm. I was building everybody else's empire, and as I say again, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. But there comes a time 
when you would need to know that you need to do these things for yourself because yeah, they, you, have, yourself. you have a, you have a greater um destiny a greater goal to achieve a greater purpose yeah it was at that point i was like nah i need to i need to figure this out boy because i am languishing for lack of a better term in a space and god has called me to do something so much more you yeah. and you mentioned that and it actually hits a deep part of me as well because um again and this is always a, a learning curve you never yeah. you're never in a stagnant set place to say this yeah. is where i'm at this is what i'm going to do things or oh, especially as a creative you're always evolving and trying to figure out the next best way to to get yourself to the next level yeah. and for me i i've had years of, of switching things up so much to yeah. try to figure out what works best for me what what yeah. am i supposed to really be doing with this business model and it's uh, no lie within the last couple of months particularly during this time of, yeah, of covid, COVID where yeah. everybody had a little bit of you know silent yeah, moments to, re- to reflect and to reframe yeah. janelle fronton had told me something so simple but it hit home for me we both had a conversation about, about listen we both are very strong administratively right yeah. we can do a lot of behind the scenes things that we think um we thought at the time yeah. was what we were meant to do for other people yeah until we realize we're not really that happy exactly. doing it for other people and the, the strengths that we have yes it can benefit other people and yeah. those are the people that we have to be a little more selective with because it takes so much more time and energy out yeah. of us to offer that to other people yeah. versus investing it in ourselves Correct. right the best and most fulfilled times we had as creatives mm-hmm. was when we did projects for ourselves yeah. our own in projects our, in our stuff yeah and you said that there and it made it, it makes so much yeah. sense and it might hit home for somebody else who's Correct. watching this to know that you know even though you are strong in a particular area it does not mean that you have to render that yeah. as a service yeah. to somebody else yeah. it might just very well mean you have this ability to create something yeah. that is that is bound and destined to have an impact yeah. on somebody else or on other people i know countless people who are creatives mm-hmm. but kind of followed in that safe vein see, yes very and traditional I would, yeah and i would see them to this date and they'd be like yo like i'm real happy because of seeing you doing what you want to do like yeah. this is where i am and i wish that i have i can have you know i could have had the the, the, the strength and the courage to, to launch out and do what the, i really want to do a lot of them stuck you know so i would they would see me and be like boy you live in this nice i mean it hard eh? mm-hmm. this is not an easy road being a being one a creative in trinidad and tobago mm-hmm. and being an entrepreneur at the same time is not easy at all yeah people might look at it and be like yeah or you're running your business and the novelty of being a business owner is something that we kind of throw around willy-nilly because it it seems cool you could flow that is hard yeah work it, it is days you will cry it have days you you'll will feel depressed you'll feel to give yeah. up because mm-hmm. it is not easy at all all. Yeah. In regards to the name and going to register mm-hmm. your business, uh, doing your name search, etc. You yeah. decided at that point that you wanted to sign up to be a sole trader. Registering as a sole trader was an accident because I didn't know there was a choice. <laughs> I really had no idea there was a choice. And as, as I could speak from now to like Kingdom to come about the, in my opinion, the lack of the, the lack of the dissemination of the information yeah. for persons who are not inclined to find these things out mm-hmm. so i went i got the business registered as well did the name search so me be any person that i am for for those of you that follow me and see uh, oh, a sick name with brandon so for me it was like okay what what do i call myself right and i spent a great deal of time thinking about what would my business name be and strange enough i had two names before i arrived at the name that i have now mm-hmm. which is motion by aaron Cruz. Mm-hmm. short motion by ac i had one name I can't remember what it is at the next name. I can't remember what it is. But when I went and did the name search at the Ministry of Legal Affairs, the both names were taken. Yeah. And I was like, wait, boy. Wait, cool. you see? You look, now imagine and if you was doing, you went and started pro- um, provide services to people and yeah, brand up exactly. yourself and spend all this money on, exactly. on branding only to realize it, it wasn't. Yeah. So I settled on the name Motion. Mm-hmm. And Motion is, in, is, is indeed the act of something moving. Mm-hmm. And anything that moves changes anything that moves evolves it's not constant it's not um stagnant it's always constant right always going somewhere and so that name spoke to me a lot motion and well as well like a city rest is history everywhere turn is the circle the camera in the little the little way which side note i designed for myself as well mm-hmm. so that's a next it's not that it's not a something i advertise as a service mm-hmm. but trying trying to be a jack of all trades in a market where you may not you might be a startup you might not have a lot of money and you need yeah. to figure things out for yourself i taught myself to 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 learn illustrator and photoshop in in enough 
um, quantity to be able to pull out. I got the certificate. I felt like a real boss. I mm-hmm. say, yeah, boy, I, I'm a rich. And then and you did just, exactly what Nikisha just as Nikisha said, I mentioned. put it in a draw. Mm-hmm. I put it in a draw and I press now, boy. And that was it. And mm-hmm. I started look so call card. I started getting into branding because mm-hmm. that's what I was, I was passionate about one and good at. Mm-hmm. So I started to develop the identity of the business as far as somebody could see. Right. But in terms of develop the identity as how a business works, mm-hmm. that was suffering. The difference between a freelancer slash a sole trader. Um, I read up an article recently and mm-hmm. exactly your faces. I was just as confused yeah. when I read it. I mean, there, there are a number of reasons why people would register the business. For one, the main thing being a structural point of view. You have yeah, a structure yeah, yeah. in place. Correct. You have a brand in place. You could actually promote yourself and build and yeah. grow an actual business um, yeah. as well as generate more income as a result of that structure. Yeah. Um, but there are people who just comfortable not yeah. ca- they don't care and they would just, just make, make their money, money and, and, yeah. and do the thing. Um, but regardless, an article that spoke to the difference between somebody who is self-employed mm. versus somebody who is a sole trader. Right. And um, there was a line in it that specifically said, a sole trader is self-employed, but a self-employed person is not necessarily, not necessarily a sole a trader. Sole trader yeah. yeah, and it, that made a lot of sense to me because yeah. there are people, as I said, that are just kind of walking around making money, doing yeah. the thing. Doing what, what they're not they're doing, doing that they should be doing outside of that is paying their taxes on what they actually make in those self-employed <laughs> people that are not officially registered as yeah, businesses. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we ran into a space where, especially during these last few months yeah. with... Um, the lockdown of trying to figure out okay how do we use this time wisely and we decided yeah. okay let's do accounting and get our stuff up to date yeah. to your demise but <laughs> to my um, peace of mind to uh, just know that we were up to date on everything um, but tell, <laughs> talk to me about why that felt so uncomfortable for you there are different reasons for me as to why I kind of fought the tax part of things as far as business is concerned I just I keep it real early I do like the taxation system for more than one reason and this is on a larger scale I feel like I don't see my tax dollars going to the right mm-hmm. use there are good things that would have been done we can't we can't destroy what governance is it there, there has been a lot of good things that have been done but mm-hmm. as far as me falling ill today and going in Port of Spain general to seek attention I could I could dare day mm-hmm. you know so I'm telling mm-hmm. you so my thing is, if I pay in all this money in taxes, I feel like I'm supposed to go down there and I need, I need to get a bed, boy. As a matter of fact, motion by you should be under a bed and I lie down. <laughs> because I pay in that tax now, boy, you think? And I mean, I, I believe there are other creatives that could attest it as well. As a creative, ad- admin stuff is a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Having to deal with purchase orders or invoices or quotations or letters or, or bills. Mm-hmm. record keeping all as a complete nightmare for me that stops me from being able to be creative because mm-hmm. my my i have to pull mental faculties from areas i don't have to <laughs> try right. and to just try and function yeah and so when so. i started a process attacks you know well, because darling patrice say we need to do the writing as well you know what the writing is writing let me do the writing yeah and i, I just want to input here and say that it's not that you we are against the idea of paying taxes entirely Beyond. at all. What and we, what, well, yeah, what well, we, well. where we stand is in in us understanding and acknowledging the fact that it is something that we are obligated to do, to do responsibly. Correct. Um, that the the management of those funds, yeah, need to be done yeah. better. Even in this in this this round of elections, right? Mm. You look at the manifestos, and we as the, this, the creative this industry, type of yeah, this type of creative, is not represented at all. And you hear them talking about, you know, we're going to target the creative industries yeah. and make sure that you know, we know we generate some revenue yeah. there. But you yeah. when you when you look at that, that is specific, more specifically tailored towards cultural towards cultural stuff. activities. It's yeah. not. In acknowledgement or in recognition of us. We yeah. understand culture as its place, but the average creative who might be a photographer, who might be a videographer. A content creator. Who might be a content creator yeah. now, and we have a lot of these things building up. Where's the representation of persons like us? But we could become targets if we don't do the right thing. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why you know? this platform would have been created for, as far as I'm concerned, it was one of the reasons why I wanted to create a platform yeah. like this because it makes the information palatable yeah. and easily consumable so that you, it's interesting enough for you to want to learn, to know it. There's real Get stories. Get enough of the nuggets to people, say, yeah. you can't say you didn't know at that point. Yeah. You know, and if you choose to do different after that, okay, that's on you. Correct. We were looking very closely at what is happening with the economy right now. Yeah. I, in particular, kept you know, happen on the fact that, listen, at the end of the day, there are gaps in the system that is yeah. going to, I mean, it's natural. That is, it's, yeah. it's very logical that if 
the creative industry, oh, all they want attention, all they want the government to pay all yeah. their attention and to give all their money and saying, you know what's going to happen? They're going to start, yeah, they're going to zone yeah. in on that and say, oh, I have money coming yeah. in here. We need to get some taxes from yeah. these people as well. So as much as you all are interested or you would like for yeah. the government to pay your attention, also that acknowledge that that is going to come at the consequence need of do, need, needing to, need do to do the, right, do the right, thing. right thing. And for me, as I say, going through, going through the entire process of the taxes felt... It was torturous to go through, yeah. but at the end of it all, yeah, I, I, I remember going. <laughs> I remember going to the accountant, and he gave me the the, the, the folder, the financials, yeah, yeah. The, the folder with the tax returns and the financial statements and so on. And when I opened that folder, I felt so proud because I saw my name, of course, Ivanity, and it motioned by AC. But but it was the actual. And this is not projections. It's not cash flow projections. Mm-hmm. These are actual financials that are legitimate to see. Motion by AC functions as a business, yeah. a registered business that is recognized in the eyes of the laws that govern Trinidad and Tobago. When mm-hmm. I can go to a bank or any kind of financial institution and say, yo, I can file a loan. So yeah. when they need three years, like, brap, you have it. That, yeah, have you it. not know scrambling yeah. to try to figure it out. So for yeah. me, I, 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 I kind of started to take myself a little more serious there. Mm-hmm. And, but that kind of that kind of made me say, okay, why did why didn't I do this earlier? Mm-hmm. And that's part of the broken system that is the creative mind. You know, things like these are the things that we need. Mm-hmm. Creatives need this mm-hmm. information. We need to be armed with the information and in know how and as you say a palatable way to feel like we can enforce ourselves and, and, and hold ourselves accountable to do the right thing. Yeah, and I mean, in your case, you're fortunate to have somebody like myself who has that administrative side to help you through that. But Arr. apart from that, stop that. <laughs> apart from that, I, you had somebody in close proximity yeah. to you to help you. That, so my yeah, point so is, I, there yeah. are other creatives we like yourself who may yeah. not have it, but you, you might not even know you have it. So you just have yeah. to start, same thing we would have said in the previous podcast, ask questions, reach yeah. out to people, say, okay, this is where yeah. I'm at. What should I do here? And let people guide you accordingly. You're not going to find people if you're not actively putting yourself out there to be found. Yeah. You know, so. Assiduously look for the information. Yeah. Look for the avenues, look for the channels, subscribe um, subscribe to persons like A Million Concepts. Yeah. Who has taken. I need to plug in for myself. Yeah. But I mean, no, it's like. So people would message me and say, I really like what they're doing. And, you know, guys, this is this is Patrice's initiative in its entirety that I am supporting. a beneficiary of and yeah. s- just supporting my extension. Mm-hmm. But the reality is this, there, this, this is, there's this forum that is now available to us yeah. to glean from and to take information from and to implement. That is, for lack of a better term, free. For you, things like your standards, right? The mm. way that you operate, the way that you set up your business. And you're smiling because I know we have a lot of back and forth <laughs> with this when you see uh, the industry shaping up a certain uh, way and people, uh, the newcomers coming in and disrupting the way that it would have been based on how, you know, your, your generation of, yeah. of video production yeah. people came into it. So... You just, you just ask me what you want to ask me and tell me how real I I'm going to be, be uh, yeah, I want to be as strategic as I can with these line of questions because I know you're very passionate about get, it. I could get salty on this topic now. Yeah, maybe. yeah. Um, so, okay, just so that the average person who is interested in videography, <laughs> just so that they have some form of information as to what sh- the standards should be. Right. Walk us through, um, you know, I guess, Iman, this is a good time for you to tell us about your services as well. So when it comes to video production, if you're starting mm. a video production company, mm-hmm. what are some of these services typically associated with that? And what are these standards um, affiliated with that? You know, we often associate creativity with things that don't fit in our mold or it, it here, neither here nor there because we have creative freedom to express who we are. Mm-hmm. But you need to package that still in a format that is professional because mm-hmm. you're going to, you are at the end of the day providing a service to somebody else. So for me, I think it starts with being professional and thank, I'm grateful for the foundation that I've had over the years because that has put me in a, in a place and a position to be a professional. The very first thing I would have learned for maybe the first three months mm-hmm. of my internship was how to properly wrap cables. Right. A power cable and XLR cable and what that exercise was designed to do was to teach a discipline in a craft. Mm-hmm. So if you go on a set, there's a discipline you need to have in terms of how you represent the set, mm-hmm. how the set looks. If you put lights up and you run cables and they, there's equipment around, how do you maintain that set so that it's one, clean and two, safe mm-hmm. and something that looks artistic in a sense. You're not trying to make it look creative, but you just want the set to have order. So yeah. that process would have been to foster that. Secondly, you need to know your craft. You need, mm-hmm. to, know your, you need to know what you're selling. Motion by AC offers creative video production services. Mm-hmm. That 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 is not point and shoot stuff. You want a music video? Check me. You want a film done? 
check me. You want a corporate video to promote your business? Check me. You want to do something out of the box and figure out where you want to start from the from the growing up? Mm-hmm. Check me and persons like myself. It's funny because when you mention those terms, I always go back to there's a term you say very regularly and I laugh at it because nobody really says it anymore. Mm-hmm. But I can see why, as you you know, you had that upbringing and the yeah. more old school vision of, of production. Um, I think it's when, when somebody asks, what what do you do? One of the things you say is television production. Yeah. Like you actually say the word television, television production. production. Yeah, you know, no video man, dog. People yeah. like to say, I'm a video man. I'm, I am not a video man. Which is funny because nowadays with the new age um, videographers mm. or video people, they don't do videos for TV. They do yeah. videos for clients or yeah, promo for or, online yeah for, for online, online consumption or digital yeah. consumption when yeah I, when i started fortunately the company that i used to work for specialized in a lot of creative video production so right we weren't a broadcast house i didn't work in the media per se to say like a tv6 or a cnc3 it was a creative production house where mm-hmm. we did a lot of commercials television commercials and business features sometimes music videos sometimes films mm-hmm. So we would we would work hand in hand with agencies and a lot of the, the stuff we did would have been formatted for T V. Right. So that's kinda where I've not wouldn't say stuck, but that's the that's why I ended up in the vein of video production that I'm in. I like to conceptualize and, 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 and figure out how we can make images move. Mm-hmm. How we can add motion to we that tell to tell a story. Correct? Yeah. The new age production crew, let's just say. That if if there's any training at all, their their training or their introduction into the yeah. industry is primarily oh there's a new camera that seems yeah. very user yeah. friendly i'm gonna yeah. start i'm gonna buy it i'm gonna invest in it and i'm gonna figure it out and i'm gonna start you know making money with this yeah um how does that feel for you as a uh, creative would have been you know in the foundation of having to work very hard in the beginning <laughs> wrapping cable <laughs> for three months before you even got uh, the opportunity to hold a camera and to work so give us some backstory to that when we were the young guys at the time mm-hmm. The guys that were older than us, like we were, so we were spoiled now, boy. All right. Only again, everything easy. Mm-hmm. Ting, ting, ting. Ratira, ratira. Once in a long talk, we used to get from the old heads, right? It's because we, we see young boys who now come to try and change up the thing now, boy. Um, fortunately for myself and, you know, friends and colleagues that would have been in that time, we were on the, the last of the old school and the brink of the new school. Right. So we would have had the you know the fortunate benefit of being able to take stuff from the old school and carry it over to the new school mm-hmm. and try and maintain what would have been that professionalism mm-hmm. the gap now with the newer generation and this is not to take away from what the newer generation can do because mm-hmm. they they are very creative they they i believe they come naturally engineered with a degree of creativity that we haven't seen before right simply because they're growing up in a newer time um technology is advancing quickly mm-hmm. we now have the age of social media so they kind of breed creativity faster um, the the downside to that, in my opinion, is a lot of discipline goes out of the window. Right. So discipline for the craft. Mm-hmm. So we would we wouldn't start with wrapping cables and trying to understand how to assist on a set. Mm-hmm. The first thing, as I rightly say, is was the newest camera, and what right. we do is we try to save that money mm-hmm. and buy the camera and expect the camera to do the work. Mm-hmm. But the camera is a tool. Mm-hmm. You can hand me a phone, and I can do an excellent video for you with a phone. I can hand an X-Man a, a, a Ari Alexa LF fancy camera yeah. and it'll shoot garbage mm-hmm. because it takes discipline and skill and craft mm-hmm. to really understand some of them not all but some of them unfortunately have been as i say bred into that industry where it's like a the, now for the, now yeah the yeah. technology is so modern and so advanced mm-hmm. that there's very little you have to put into it to get a clear image out of the bat mm-hmm. you, you can't go out there and offer service you're not knowledgeable in mm-hmm. so you need to put in your work put in your hours do the do the work, do the time, do the research. Understand what is the business behind your business and right. how the money for the business works. Right. How the commerce works. Mm-hmm. How to how to properly charge for your service and your time. Yeah. The issue now is the disconnect that I'm seeing, unfortunately, is there isn't there isn't any market research being done mm-hmm. for the younger generation to figure out what the rates are. If you're taking that, right? You're taking the lack of knowledge and the ignorance there. And appearing that with the ever-changing face of the industry, it's become very saturated as well. So what's going on now is men running out there. Because the gear looks so good, they say, All right, I could do this and I'm passionate about it. I can, I can put myself out there and get this done. Mm-hmm. If, you're you're working, if you're working, you will yeah. a procurement, you're looking for the best price mm-hmm. you could get. The issue is, if I, go by, if I go by a supermarket and... Let me say I go buy five supermarkets and four out of five of them are selling our bread for eleven dollars and ninety nine cents. The issue is we're finding men going and sell bread. 
and they're selling their bread for two dollars and fifty cents, mm-hmm. which is good for the consumer. But what you do now is you undercut in the entire foundation of what an industry is. Mm-hmm. So now when a man go buy the next grocery to sell any bread for the eleven dollars and ninety nine cents, people say, "But you wicked! You overpri- right. You overpricing the goods." Yeah, that's the issue we're facing. In video production today so what is the fix for that right because i mean you did mention something in brief there about market research and coming in said asking questions yeah. about rates etc but i mean is there a fix for something like that because you can't control unless you have some sort of union or association Correct. that you come into and there's a set standard that yeah. everybody and a code that everybody code. understands yeah. you know is being operated by yeah. and especially in a small industry like trinidad and tobago how yeah. how do you deal with that something like that as persons yeah. in the industry already well i think i think the greatest issue there is we don't we don't really have an industry mm-hmm. we i think we function more 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 like a market maybe mm-hmm. on a much much smaller scale mm-hmm. so as a yeah i'm gonna say market i don't mean like a like well, uh, no, well market, you said that any visual of a market actually gets a place because everything must be so crazy and all and, over the and place t- f- and st- funny enough that's a good representation for what the industry feels like yeah. now and the, 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 the biggest issue is if we as creatives whether it be as I say fashion or film or TV or music or whatever if we on this small scale can't govern ourselves appropriately the people that we're trying to attract to pay attention to us they're not going to take us seriously either mm-hmm. we fighting inside we fight. All of us fighting among each other. It, it wants to feel like there's camaraderie. Crab in a barrel. Crab in a barrel because yeah. everybody trying to live. And I, I, at the end of the day, I can't exit a boy, you know, because mm-hmm. I can't mind you. Mm-hmm. You can't come and live by me. Mm-hmm. You ain't getting a plate of food every day for free. Mm-hmm. So I can't tell you you're seen king. Don't charge that. Yeah. But at the same time, if this is what the norm becomes, five, ten years from now, the entire industry will implode. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there'll be no job. So, all right. So, you now saying, well, why go charge this? And who vex laws because I had to survive? Mm-hmm. About ten years from now, our next man, the next generation, come and set a charge a quarter. What you charging now? Yeah, because what you, you, you gonna be, you barely survive off of yeah, what you have. You're gonna be upset the same way. So mm-hmm. there is no industry standard. You made, you know, you made mention of a union. We have no union. There's no union, um, in this in this small and in this setup. And can this change? I believe it can. Mm-hmm. I believe there needs to be intervention from both public and private sector. On a national mm-hmm. level, I think the government needs to come in and pick greater attention and respect to the creative field but at, at the same time I can't fault them yeah we're not always presenting a very serious image of ourselves yeah and you're dealing with commerce there's money mm-hmm. people people money is as a value and they're gonna throw my money behind something that disorganized because yeah. that's a bad investment yeah and so if our industry doesn't seem investable if that's a word mm-hmm. I know. I don't think anybody will want to invest in it. Yeah, and you're right. There is no structure. There's no body that's There's regulating no body. it to yeah. help everybody kind of stay on a certain level and to help the consumer respect that Correct. level as well. Correct. Right. I've had people contact me for quotes for projects, and when I send them the cost, they laugh. Mm-hmm. It's like I can't pay. I can't pay all for this. I was mm-hmm. like, Would you like to know how much one camera costs? Yeah. Yeah. So you could understand the in- degree of investment that goes in as a creative. Couple with a creative who is a small business owner and an entrepreneur who needs capital to invest and inject into their business. You go by the bank, the bank laughing. As you walk through the door, the bank laughing at yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. So, and again, a lot of the people who do any yeah. little side hustles, they, it's not a business structure a business. thing. They just gain this extra cash on the side. They put in it in their personal exactly. accounts. They live in. So what do you want to be? Do you want to be a hustler or a business owner mm-hmm. or an entrepreneur or a professional? Mm-hmm. So that when you conduct yourself professionally, mm-hmm. people will take you seriously. And it's not that they're trying to dig out nobody here with your yeah. price. You, know, you want people to understand that my service is of value. For me, the side that we could do a better job at taking control of is if, we, if we police ourselves yeah. correctly to just yeah. do the right thing. Mm-hmm. The best way we know how to. Because mm-hmm. that way, if we all somehow kind of develop, as I say, some kind of code mm-hmm. and we communicate and we say, listen, these are the parameters within which we want to work, mm-hmm. we could lift the standard of the industry as, a, as far as business is concerned. I'm talking about producers are talking about graphic designers and graphic artists who people just expect to get the work for them for f- for free now but yeah but this is my creative intellectual property because my job may not be as tangible as the doctor or the lawyer or the nurse or, 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 or as regulated as these businesses have been for years you can't go in a a dealer a car dealership and, and you say i'm looking for a bm biking boy yeah 
1.5 million. Brother, when you have 20,000, all that cars so expensive. You have to run from neighbor, you can buy no BM, go down to look for foreign news. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. So when a man come to see me do my video production work, I want this stand to be the same thing. Yeah. So there are people who would call me, clients would call and say, listen, the other men, I'll get it for cheaper. You know? mm-hmm. I'll get it from them for cheaper. You know? It's your work and your standard. That's what I want. And that's the thing. It's, it's to and maintain that, yeah. that so that the persons who really love your work Correct. and the quality of what you're putting out, they will save the money and they will yeah. invest the time and they will invest the, the revenue or whatever is needed to, to achieve that Correct. and to, to come to you for that service. And that's, that's part of what keeps me going every day. I know a lot of people would be interested uh, for those in the field of videography yeah. or video production. Um, and getting some advice on how do you go about getting clients. Based on your experience, how has that worked for you? What are some of the tips or tricks you would give or you would enlighten persons like that in knowing? From what my growth and, and, and progress would have been, honestly, it's been a lot of word of mouth. Um, apart from word of mouth, the quality of work that I do. Mm-hmm. Um, people would see the quality and be let they would be so... Um, blown away in a sense for lack of a better term by what the work was mm-hmm. that they find me they mm-hmm. look for me and they find me um, I've done a lot of traditional marketing in terms of you know make sure your brand is set up properly you need to you need to have a logo you need to have an Instagram account you need to have a Facebook account something that's separate and apart from your personal account if you have one mm-hmm. and make sure that you put proper examples of your work there our advantage is we are we are a visual business. Mm-hmm. So to the man who does typewriting services, that's kind of hard to market. But if you're a photographer, take a stunning picture and put it up. Yeah. If you're a videographer, invest in some kind of video, find mm-hmm. some models and do something pro bono for portfolio sake to put on your website or to put on your Facebook profile or on your Instagram so that people can see what you can do. Mm-hmm. Do something that's called a showreel. Mm-hmm. Take all the work that you would have done um, over the period of time, compile them to a piece of music. Yeah in a creative way and use that as your CV in a sense. That's mm-hmm. your that's your digital resume. Mm-hmm. And send those out. Get the get the emails of those people that might be in the advertising agencies and send them a copy. Yeah. Most importantly be visible. Post as often as you could put your information and your yourself out there as much as you could so that people can see you and stay relevant because the information changing so much you could get lost. And quickly. I know one of these strategies that you would have used um is based on offering to collaborate or to partner with yeah. persons on projects um, and I want to wrap up on this note because I know this is a sensitive area for a lot of people yeah. with regards to working for free or to exchanging yeah. services so as somebody who has been in the industry for years um, how have you been able to navigate through that bartering system for me what I would do I would firstly kind of try to identify projects that I think I could align with well mm-hmm. in the sense that there needs to be there needs to be a return on investment for everybody involved mm-hmm. Um, not everybody that runs behind you to get something done is a project that you need to undertake. I kind of learned that by force. Um, thanks to Patrice a lot for some advice there as well because being a creative, you could jump at almost anything comes to you. Mm-hmm. Anything that comes to you because you're excited to, to produce to and to create yeah. and to get stuff done. So I started by identifying projects that align with me. Um, second to that, I mean, if you, I, I would say if you're now starting up, yes, look look into doing some pro bono work. I've done a lot of free work. I've mm-hmm. sown a lot of seeds. I've, 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 I've put a lot of stuff out there because I believe that there's a, there's a lot of when you put stuff out, you get stuff back in. Mm-hmm. What I've started doing now is I don't do anything necessarily for entirely free. And that's mm-hmm. something that I learned to what time. Put a value to you. There is a value on your work. So let me say you decide to do something for somebody for free, quote unquote, and you invest something. Let me say you sponsor it. If you're sending an invoice to somebody, still put the total value of what that service costs. Yeah. So that they would understand what it costs. And two years, you still maintain the standard of, listen, this is the service I'm letting you know. This is a partnership. We're mm-hmm. working this out together. But these are what the costs are. Mm-hmm. This is what the, you know, the entire figure looks like. I know another thing that we started to do for you as well is to, at bare minimum, decide in those types of projects, what are the miscellaneous essentials that you yeah, definitely can't avoid? Like you're there. going to have to spend gas money to go to yeah. to shoot somewhere. You're going to have to buy food if it's a long shoot. A crew member to make sure you has to get, yeah, yeah. Have to make sure your crew get covered in some way. Um, so, I mean, that's something that I would advise a lot of people to do as yeah. well, to establish a base cost. Something that is still within reason, yeah, yeah that the yeah. person can afford. Listen, if somebody really wants to work with you and you tell them, listen, I can't do it for free, this is my price. This is what I would yeah. usually charge. But if you can come and cover at least this, yeah. I will work with you. That, that that conversation is a conversation that can happen. I don't want people to leave here feeling 
or to, or to go into any type of business situation because I learned that the hard way. Yeah. Scaredy to say what your price is uh, or to, to put your bill. You know, yeah, if you fall out. Stand your ground. Stand your ground and say, listen, this is the price. Roof. This is the yeah. price. Um, I'm willing to work with you. We could work out something. Yeah. Or at least establish a base cost based on yeah. things that you know you cannot avoid. You cannot avoid if you have to pay somebody a rental fee. You cannot avoid if you have to yeah. pay, bring the person out for your crew and yeah. they need to eat or they need to drink. There are certain fees that you really just cannot avoid. And in those cases is where I really encourage yeah. persons to try as best as you can to cater for that yeah. and budget for that. If they really want to work with you, they'll find the money. Yeah, and another tip based on what an, our accountant would have shared with us as well is in those cases, that sponsorship still has a value. Has a and you can value, benefit yeah. in some way, whether you put that as an expense to your tax deductibles or something. Yeah. yeah, you can yeah. be able to benefit from those things. Not to mention... um on the batter inside yeah for instance we have rion elbow on here helping us with audio yeah. and rion understands and vice versa that we don't always have the cash flow to be able to pay up front yeah. one time but rion is an artist and he would yeah. need help administratively sometimes yeah. and so he would call me and be like patrice i need xyz i network. don't mind exchanging that information with because network, i know if yeah. anything happens i could always call rion to come yeah. on and help out and he will willingly do it and yeah. vice versa so it's also being able to discern yeah when is um on a good opportunity to just you know to 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 loosen the reins on yeah. the cash 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 part of things and maintain the yeah. relationship Forge and just and exchange services Correct. yeah so i just want to drive the point home guys especially us creatives understand your worth as much as you can mm -hmm. um we already we already fighting uh we, we fighting against the green in terms of respect and the building of the industry being taken seriously as professionals yeah. we have it is even more imperative that we stick to what these goals are try to put the best systems you could put in place as possible try to execute your, your jobs as best as you can and let people know what the value of the service is because in doing so they will start to respect the service more you've dropped a lot of important I hope points the, i hope the people and them love the content they don't know well i mean you hit the grounds you hit the grounds on on many levels yeah well i mean you see for, for me i would have learned a lot by error yeah you know so I'm happy, I'm happy that i could be on this on this platform here with you mm -hmm. just so you guys to know as well a lot of you all may look at patrice's stuff and think that i edit them i don't yeah no he doesn't I yeah do let's put that out she, there she funny let's patrice put that out there does all our editing we have a little text you see flying across the screen and thing yeah, I mean, you help with the little idea in between. I assist too, in between, but you're but funny, so you do your own thing. I'll take my, I'll take my credit with yeah, the credit yeah, like, Um We learn a lot along yeah, the way, especially. Yeah, so thank you again for bringing your wisdom to our platform, to Business One-on-One. I thought, on one. I, I thought they were going to say is thanks for bringing it to the Red Table, but the table in the Red King. No. And it's all pack all on this table line, I think. No, to the Bronx Table. We to have wisdom being <laughs> shared and exchanged on the Bronx Table. Yeah, thanks um, for having me, man. Yeah, so to you guys who've made it this far, Thank you for watching. And, you know, I just want to remind you that there was a episode one that we did with Nikisha, Nikisha Ali, Ali, who is a creative business Good consultant. Stuff. Yeah, and she, she also gave us some really valuable information in that video as well. So if you haven't seen that one, go check that out. It's on the A Million Concepts YouTube channel. And, yeah. Don't be ignorant like I was and many of us are as the years went by to not take the information, to not take the advice and actually act on it because... The availability of the information is one thing. The action yeah. is something else. And, and as creatives, a lot of times we have an issue with action as well. So That's plug, plug yourself. I don't think you need to plug yourself. I'm surprised you didn't wear the slipper and the pants and thing with your logo. Please tell the people how to reach Facebook, you. Motion by Aaron Caruth. Instagram, Motion by AC. My website is www.motionbyac.com. Bring all your money. Let me do some nice work. You don't nice. know. Thanks for watching, guys. Okay. Okay.